Hi, welcome to another EV Blab episode. This one I wasn't going to do because it's rather embarrassing, but I thought, hey, this could be a learning experience for some people. Now, um, this is my um, EDC Cronheit MV106 uh, voltage standard. If you haven't seen it before, I'll link in uh, videos down below. Very nice metrology grade uh, voltage reference standard. And I was testing a multimeter the other day, plugging it into it, and I, as usual, I set it for 10.00000 volts, and this thing is absolutely bang on. I've had it tested at a traceable uh, cow standards lab. And this is what I got, 10.470 volts. Now, I sort of freaked out for a second because I actually um, had the multimeter switch to ohms when I actually plugged it in. And of course, in ohms mode, the multimeter will uh, try and generate, it will generate a voltage and try and generate a current into this thing. And I've done that before without problem, but I was sure that this thing actually worked before I plugged in that particular multimeter on the ohms. And as soon as I plugged it in, wham, I all of a sudden it was giving out 10.47 volts. And look, if I switch it down to nine here, well, it's, it's still 9.47. So it had all that resolution, right? So it had all the typical re resolution there. So it seems to work, but it was out. And if I turn it down to 100 millivolts here, right? It's bang on, of course. And if I turn it down to 10 millivolts, it was bang on again. It was only the 10 volt range like this. So I thought, oh no, I've somehow this multimeter in ohms range is blowing this thing. But I knew, you know, like that, that's a real remote possibility because, uh, you know, this thing's only going to generate like a milliamp at most. And this thing is pretty robust. It's going to handle that. As I said, I've done it before, but hey, those were the symptoms. And, you know, look, it's not a dicky connection or anything like that. And I turn it negative and we get the negative and it works fine on the 100 millivolt range. So I thought, you know, somehow I've blown maybe the output of an op amp or something in the feedback loop or something like that, you know, um, even though the remote possibility what it was. And that was, that was what I got. So I thought, you know, that's got to be like the problem and I thought oh great okay I can do a repair video of this I got all like, super excited that you know I'd be able to actually repair this thing because it's a nice you know all through hole design and and everything in there so I got all excited so I moved it over here and on onto the uh, uh, main bench where I shoot videos here took the lid off like this and then I realized dull oh, what the problem was and no it's not blowing it's a pebcac problem exists between keyboard and chair i.e me i was fooled into thinking this thing had failed due to various circumstances but it hasn't now if you want to try and figure it out pause the video now and uh try and figure it out so i'll twiddle my thumbs until you go on pause it Try and figure it out. You should be able to. Um, uh, maybe not by what you actually see here, but by a bit of deductive reasoning, you might be able to figure it out. And as I said, no, it's not. Dicky connections down here like this. We've got our sense terminals there. Everything's just fine. So what's wrong here? Well, it is those sense terminals. Watch this. Ta-da! Look at that. It wasn't making contact on that sense terminal. And if I put it negative like this, bingo, the negative one also was like just a smidgen out. It wasn't making contact. So these sense terminals here, of course, in these sorts of um, instruments, and not only in these metrology grade instruments, but uh, like a four ohms terminal measurement, that's what you have to have here, a four ohms measurement because uh, you have to sense right at the load. In this case, we don't have to. Hence, we can use these shorting bars here because uh, the multimeter load is only 10 meg, of course. It's very, very small. And these wires here, they're only like a milliohm or something. So do ohms law, you can figure out the voltage drop across these cables is bugger all. Hence why we can just sense here. But larger loads, we'd have to sense there. Anyway, that's what it was. Just... It tight and it wasn't tight on there. You know, I wiggled them around. It looked like they were in, you know, but it was only like, you know, a smidgen, like half a turn out or something like that. That's all it had to be. 
that it just didn't make good enough contact, just a tiny, tiny smidgen out. So there you go, a trap for young players. And what's happening, of course, is that the feedback uh, loop in here, if it's got no sense, if it's not reading that sense voltage back, it'll just go to full scale. So obviously, that's what it's doing. It's going to 10.5 uh, as full scale, and then negative 10.5 uh, down there as full scale. And that will, of course, change even if you um, go down like that. So that's what the problem was. Dole! Yes, it's incredibly embarrassing, but I thought that might be a lesson for some people. Don't assume something's faulty. I got a bit too excited there that I'd be able to do a cool little repair video with this thing, I think, rather than think about it. But I ultimately did discover the problem pretty darn quick, so eh, it's not that embarrassing. But anyway, I thought I'd share. Hope you learned something there. Catch you next time.